In this module, we're going to do another example of convolution in one dimension. Um, so let's look at this. Uh, so now we're going to sort of take a look at how to apply this flip and shift algorithm. Uh, recall from the definition of convolution, it means that we're going to take one function and flip and shift it, and the shift is a function of this x variable, which is the output variable. Then we're going to multiply it by the other function. We're going to take the product of those two functions, and then we're going to integrate that product. Okay. So here's a specific example we're going to look at. The problem is what happens when we take a rect function and convolve it with another rect function. So we have rect convolved with rect, and mathematically that means that we want to evaluate this um, function right here. So we have a rect of xi uh, multiplied by a rect of xi, an x minus xi, d xi. And for every output about y of x, for every output coordinate, there is going to be a shift associated with that flipped and shift rect function. OK, so let's go ahead and do that, draw what that might look like. So for example, the rect, the g of xi is always going to be this rect function, minus 1 half to 1 half to 1. And at x equals 0, uh, rect of x, of f, rect of x uh, minus xi is just going to be rect of minus xi. So that's just going to look like a rect function. And this has amplitude of 1. And when I multiply these two functions together, because 1 times 1 is 1, I'm just left with. Uh, the rect times rect is just a rect, and now the integral of that multiplication is simply going to be 1. So down here we're going to keep track of, as a function of x, what the value of the convolution is. So at x equals 0, we have a value of 1. Okay. Now this we can just, this is just going to be the same, but now let's consider x of 1 half. Okay. So now at x equals 1 half, we want to draw rect of 1 half minus xi. Okay, so we've plugged in 1 half for x. And so this is going to be a rect function that's centered around 1 half. So 1 half. So it's going to look like that, okay, with an amplitude of 1. And so now if I think about multiplying this rec function by my original rec function, the only place it's going to overlap is from 0 to 1 half. And so that's going to be the multiplication of those functions. And the area of that multiplication is just 1 half. So we know that at 1 half, it's going to have a value of 1 half. All right. Now let's look at x equals 1. So this g of xi is still the same, just a rect function. But now we want rect of 1 minus xi. Okay. And so that's just going to be a rect function centered around 1. So that will go from 1 half to 3 halves. And um, when we multiply those two functions together, there's not going to be any overlap, and so the area is going to be 0. So we know that at 1, the area is going to be 0. And so, for, and then if we sort of imagine what would happen for intermediate values of x, we can sort of convince ourselves that the overlap is going to literally decrease as we increase x. So we can go like that. All right? And similarly, if we go and look at x equals, so this is the same, x equals minus 1 half, then we have to draw a rect of minus 1 half minus xi. Okay. And now this is going to be a rect function that has centered where uh, minus xi, oops, when minus xi minus 1 half equals 0, or xi equals minus 1 half. Okay. So it's going to be centered around minus 1 half. And so it's going to be a rec function like that. And so when I multiply it by the 
original rec function, it looks like this, minus a half to zero. And so the area of overlap is one half. So we know that minus one half, we have a half. And then we can, by symmetry, we can guess that at minus one is going to be zero. And so we have this. This is a function that's used enough that we give it a special name. It's called the triangle function. So the triangle function is equal to rect of x involved with rect of x. Okay. So what we've done here is we've shown how we would apply, def, apply the definition. We, we've shown how we flipped and shifted our function. And we've shown that at every flip and shift, we have to look at the area of overlap. And then that area of overlap is the, uh, the value of the convolution for every value of x that we use. All right. And this slide just shows it. Uh, what we've just done here, x is equal 0. And we have that over area of overlap is 1. Here, x is equal to 1. And the over, over, area of overlap is 0. And here, x is equal to 1 half. And we have this area of overlap equals 1 half.